150 million customers. Every day, that's 25 million trips. All over the world, across 10,000 cities. And every day, the company is processing 35 terabytes of data. Where you live, the places you go, the food you eat, when you travel, how often you travel. Millions and millions of data points to help Uber predict exactly what you need, when you need it, and where you need it. And at the heart of all of this is AI, a giant decision engine running experiments, making predictions, sending millions of emails, billions of push notifications, all to subtle influence the behavior of millions of users worldwide. A giant AI brain making millions of decisions every single day. This is the story of the secret AI initiative that powers one of the largest tech companies in the entire world, Project Michelangelo. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past decade, you've probably taken an Uber at some point in your life. The business model is pretty simple. A rideshare company that gets you from point A to B or delivers food to your house. They were one of the hottest startups in Silicon Valley back in the day. But you'd think a publicly traded company valued at $160 billion would just be raking it in, right? Well, not exactly. They only just became profitable in 2023, over a decade after the company was founded. And the reason is simple. They've been burning through money like crazy to get to this point. That's because every technology company is faced with the same dilemma. You raise a whole bunch of money from venture capitalists, and the expectation is that you grow as quickly as possible. Your growth has to justify the burn multiple or the amount of money you're spending to acquire your customers. And Uber has raised a lot of money, $13.2 billion to be exact. You do everything you can to get as many users as possible, and then you figure out your monetization strategy later on. The premise is simple. Build a product that solves a problem, give it away for free or at a really low cost, hook the customer on the value, and then monetize that user. The idea is that you'll eventually reach some sort of scale where you can be profitable. And if you just look at the history of Uber, basically every dollar the company spent in the beginning was on acquiring users and drivers. And there's this long running joke in Silicon Valley that every tech company eventually becomes an advertising network because it's the easiest way to monetize a user base. So in 2015, Uber reached this interesting inflection point because the business is a lot more complex than just matching users with drivers. And the scale of things is only continuing to grow exponentially. What most people overlook is just how sophisticated and advanced this app actually is. Uber plays on this concept called operational efficiency, which basically just means you get to watch the product work. You actually see what's happening behind the scenes. You pick a cab, you get matched to a driver, you get transparent pricing, and you get an ETA and a live feed of when your driver will be there. There's a whole bunch of nuance and psychology happening here. But really the point is that this transparency reduces the perceived waiting time, which creates a bridge of trust with the consumer. It's an illusion of control, and you think that you're influencing the decision process in some way, when you're really just doing what Uber wants you to do. But behind the scenes, there's a whole lot more going on, and Uber is using everything they know about you to personalize the experience for you. And it's all happening in real time. Destinations based on your ride history, Reminders when you need a ride. Special discounts when you're hungry at that new restaurant you like. Push notifications, emails. And all of this is changing and updating dynamically on a person-to-person -person basis. What you see is not what I see. There's so much happening you can't even begin to imagine it behind the scenes. Just take Uber Eats for example. The app is making delivery predictions, optimizing the restaurants you see on your homepage, autocomplete. Everything is specific and tailored to what they know about you. Predictions, computations, huge machine learning models. And what's happening is the data team's trying to solve all of these complex use cases by building ad hoc machine learning algorithms, new models, and it's just really, really difficult for them because there's no standardized process. And they realize the only way they're gonna be able to keep scaling is by building their own AI platform, an actual AI decisioning engine. But in order to understand why AI is so important to Uber, you've got to understand their business model. And really, you've got two main pillar categories, ride matching with riders and drivers, and food delivery through Uber Eats. And Uber takes a cut from everyone, the driver, the rider, the delivery guy, even the restaurant. And then you've got two smaller categories of their business, freight for managing shipments and advertising. But more than 80% of Uber's revenue comes from ride sharing and Uber Eats, which means it's all tied to transactions. Someone requesting a driver, someone ordering an actual meal. Fundamentally, this means Uber's not making a dime unless you're using the app. So everything the company does is focused on acquiring users and driving usage. And it's the same story for every single tech company. YouTube, Facebook, X, Reddit. They all want you to spend more time in the platform so they can sell you more ads. So the more personalized Uber can make your experience, the more transactions you'll do through the app. And the more money Uber will make. 
so it's a win-win for both. You get a better experience and Uber makes more money. You're happy because Uber solved your problem and Uber is happy because you're ordering more food or requesting more drivers. Just like we're more happy when you hit the subscribe button. So in 2015, Uber does what any great tech company does. They build their way out of the problem with new technology. And they start this new initiative called Michelangelo to solve six core use cases. Managing data, training models, evaluating them, deploying them, making predictions, and monitoring those predictions. And when you realize just how much data Uber has, it's easy to see why this is such a problem for them. The app is collecting everything. Account information, demographic data, travel information, location data, transactions, the things you do in the app, even the information about the device you're using. They're processing over 35 terabytes of data per day, and they're running over 500,000 queries across 12,000 users. That's roughly the equivalent of 35 trillion books, according to ChatGPT. The product is the app, but your data is the fuel that powers it. So the question is, what exactly is this AI brain doing? Well, the easiest way to understand it is to think of it as a big algorithm that's built around a whole bunch of data models. But it's constantly learning. It's making predictions, calculations, recommendations, all in real time. Actually, according to an article written by the data team at Uber, the platform is making over 10 million predictions per second. There are over 400 active machine learning projects and over 20,000 different models training monthly. And this is powering everything to the entire user flow in the writing app to everything you see in the Uber Eats app. They're even using this to forecast demand and manipulate pricing to ensure there's always enough drivers. But what's more interesting is the way they're using Michelangelo to subtly influence user behavior. You see, all that great personalization doesn't matter if you're not actually in the app. So the biggest problem that Uber constantly faces is figuring out how to get 150 million users back into their app consistently and repeatably. And the way they do this is by orchestrating billions of push notifications. Those little reminders that appear on your phone that cause you to open the app, a nudge to book your next ride, a special promotion for dinner time. The problem is, it's really hard to know what to send and when to send it. What's the thing that actually influences a user to order a meal or request a driver? And this is where Michelangelo comes into play. Instead of having marketers spend hours building out and orchestrating these campaigns, Michelangelo automates everything. That means what to send, who to send it to, where to send it, what time to send it, what's the most relevant thing you can show the customer. Essentially what's happening is that this AI brain is looking at all the creative, all the messaging, all the offers, and everything the customer has done in the past to figure out what to send and when to send it. And not just what one single customer has done in the past, how other customers engaged with these other same messages. And the marketing team just sets up guardrails to ensure this AI doesn't get out of control. But what's really interesting is that it's constantly learning. It's this constant iterative feedback loop. So it's not just looking at broad audiences like people who eat Mexican food. It's analyzing data at the individual level and the aggregate level. It's running millions of A-B tests. For context, there's an article from 2020 which talks about the volume of messages this platform's capable of sending. It can send up to 70,000 push notifications per second. If they wanted to, that's 6 billion messages per day. Granted, they're probably not sending that many, and if they are, a good portion of them probably aren't marketing related. Okay, 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 let's step back a minute though. Remember earlier how I said every company eventually becomes an advertising company? Well, this is probably the biggest use case for Michelangelo because they can retrofit that same technology to serve you hyper-relevant ads based on everything they know about you. You're probably thinking Uber and ads. I don't really understand how that works. But the thing is, it's already happening. Uber's on pace to do over a billion in revenue in 2024 from advertising. They've launched these new things called journey ads. You've got sponsored placements in Uber Eats. And now they're experimenting with screens in the actual cars themselves. And if I'm being honest, I'd make a bet that Uber's advertising business is going to become the most profitable segment for the company in the next five years. Because as long as you have active users, there's no limit on the number of ads that you can sell. As long as people keep logging into your platform, those are people you can be targeting with ads. And this is the point that everyone misses. Everyone thinks Uber is a multi-billion dollar company because of the product they offer, the app. But the real thing that sets Uber apart is the fact that they've been building out this AI platform for the past 10 years before AI was even a thing. Uber literally couldn't function without Michelangelo. So in a way, the reason Uber is so valuable is not because they have 150 million users. It's because they built an AI brain to monetize their data. This is the future that every tech company is building because every company's at war for your data. It's the new oil. And Apple didn't just become the most iconic tech brand overnight. It took years. 